Hello everybody. On my last video I talked about knowing your stack. On today's video I'm going to talk about why a short stack. And the answer is really simple and very visual. So when computers started out, a single computer took a whole floor of a building. This is a building here. Give you a sense of scale. And then in the era of the desktop computer, a computer fit on a desktop. These old clunkers that many people from my generation remember, and the ones that came later even had a mouse on them. And then it brings us to today where it's tablets and phones and the occasional wearable and uh, keyboards and larger monitors are very much in the periphery but they're still around people who want to be productive in the old school way still attach keyboards and monitors sometimes even large televisions so what comes next well the answer the processing power is going to be reduced to probably about the size of a grain of rice now are those grains of rice going to have keyboards and monitors no they're not even going to be general computing devices maybe one time out of a thousand people will attach some sort of monitor and some sort of keyboard to these things to uh, sort of do old school computing. But way more often, these little grains of rice processors are gonna go into everything else, what some people are calling the internet of things. So, the entire programming stack that's traditionally used or is used recently is biased towards this model. It really assumes that there's going to be an x86 processor of some sort in there. It assumes that there's going to be the monitor, that there's going to be a GUI. What do you think the GUIs are going to be on this grain of rice? GUI? No. Cost. Right? They're not going to waste a single line of metal on this thing. This is going to have just enough, just enough for the OS, and I'll put OS in quotes because it's going to strip down OS. Uh, the first thing people do on these types of tiny devices is install something called BusyBox. And I'll talk about that more later. But it's just enough OS, just enough for an OS plus an embedded app. An embedded app. And these things are going to be everywhere. If, you know, a single computer model considered successful sells about 20 million units, that's in the area of, say, like the C64 and the uh, early iPhone models, they've far surpassed it by now, but that's a phenomenally successful number, 20 million units. These grain of rice computers are gonna be in the area of hundreds of billions. Hundreds of billions. And many of them are gonna be programmable over something like the internet, the future version of the internet, or your own private networks. And what kind of programming do you think you're gonna to need to be doing to thrive in this world? To thrive in this world, you're gonna be able, you're gonna to have to be able to survive in an environment that has just enough OS. Think you're gonna be using a keyboard and mouse and a graphical user interface? Nope. It's going to be remote logins through something much like 
what we call a terminal window. Terminal. Um, also, these days it's called SSH, and you can refer to my uh, earlier video about connecting to a computer through uh, SSH and terminal. So this is why I am leading my audience to learn the short stack, because the short stack is leading us into having capabilities in the future. In the near future. This is a lot closer than everyone, uh, well, than the general public realizes. And committing yourself too much to these tall stacks with the fragility, the dependency, the licensing encumberments, and the vendor whims of the visual studios of the world, and all those other heavy duty, heavyweight IDEs, nope. We are going to focus on something that has just enough OS to get that grain of rice tiny embedded computer run and to get its embedded app running. And that sets us up for the future. Why a short stack? Thank you.